I think I think it's recording. So, right. Raoul Batnaga, welcome. Delighted to talk to you uh, this morning. And uh, CFO of, uh, of, in the past, of many uh, multinational businesses, global operations. Uh, I think now non-executive director of a number of uh, quite big, large Indian uh, businesses. Uh, real pleasure to speak to you. You and I have worked in, in, in the past together. And uh, I thought it would be a great opportunity to pick the brains of, of, of an experienced CFO uh, on, on a couple of aspects of uh, supply chain leadership that uh, you know might help some of our colleagues, some of our younger aspiring supply chain leaders. I know you and I could probably talk about cricket for uh, for half an hour, and particularly the the pink ball. Uh, and, and can. Is, is a two day test really a test match? Uh, but, uh, but but maybe we'll put that back to a to a different time, Rahul. But. Um, Delighted to, to, to be able to uh, to pick your brains. You, you, I, I regard you as the thinking man CFO. Uh, I think uh, you really, I think uh, you think very thought. You know, you're a very thoughtful person in terms of the way you respond. So I'm really looking forward to uh, getting your perspective on something. I think the thing that I'd like to ask you all is, um, I think from you know younger supply chain professionals growing up uh, in, in their careers in supply chain, you know, they work quite regularly with, with their with their financial partners. But and, and I think that the basic aspects of what is expected from a supply chain professional uh, are known. You know whether it's the cogs working capital, you know the the the, the, sort of the management accountancy part of, of running uh, running uh, supply chain operations. But the one thing I think that we could learn from people like yourself is perhaps some thoughts from you on what perhaps distinguishes, differentiates really good supply chain professionals in the way that they work with their CFO? You know, what, perhaps things that you've noticed about, you know, the people that you've worked with that make the difference in, you know, helping you to, you know, to deliver the, the, the needs of the business of CFO. So if that's a, a, a relatively good start for you, perhaps I could have your, your, your thoughts on that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Don. Uh, thank you for the kind words and thank you for inviting me on the Dunk Low Show. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, uh, those are very flattering words, uh, Dunk, and uh, I want to repay the compliment by saying that uh, my understanding of the potential or the true potential of the supply chain function has in large measure been influenced by our partnership over several years in Ireland. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, and the reason I say that is because uh, prior to that exposure, I was always used to seeing the supply chain function operating more as a service provider to the organization. Yeah. Uh, it tended to be more logistical in nature. Yes. And it is in the Ireland business that both of us were engaged with that uh, I actually saw it as a front of the house, front of the shop function, if you will. Yes. And uh, it is very interesting that uh, just that transformation uh, completely shifts points of emphasis uh, of the supply chain function and the relationship of that function with the CFO and the nature of the collaboration that needs yes. to be enhanced. Okay. So that was my, uh, uh, I wanted to offer that as a bit of a, a preamble, uh, as a context setter to the way I've kind of uh, always thought about the relationship. No, I, I think Raul, you know, uh, I, I look fondly back on, on the, the years back we, we, we worked in Ireland. Uh, and I think you and I talked about this, that actually, uh, you know, that, that, that business, although it was part of a, of a, of a multi, multinational business, was actually a sort of a, an independent business on, it, on its own within that. Uh, we're giving, I think, an opportunity for people to, in the, in the functions to, to really experience, you know, running their own, you know, P&L within, within, within the business, rather than being just a sort of a division or a small part, uh, just managing cost centres. Um, and I always found uh, there the opportunity uh, to push the relationship with, uh, particularly with yourself, for us to explore how we de de deliver better customer value. You know, be that be that value in 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 uh, in the product offering, being in the costs. Um, but I think you know one of the things that I've been interested in, you know, is 
what uh, what is it about uh, you know the, the the relationship you know the beyond the transactional relationship mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. is it that, that makes the difference you know for you you know you as an perhaps you as an individual as a CFO what is it what is it beyond the transaction that really you know ex, you know inspires you to 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 deliver more with the with, right. the, with the individual. So so, so Doc, I kind of look at it as um, an interdependent kind of a relationship. Uh, to use uh, an old cliche, uh, cash is king, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, so if cash is king, I would suggest to you that the supply chain function is the king maker. Can be, right? yeah. Uh, they can influence the financial performance of any business in ways that I don't believe uh, uh, any other function can, all right? And I, I, I don't want to get into specifics uh, uh, underneath that statement, but the specifics are very clearly uh, linked to processes, to capabilities, to MRP2 processes, uh, et cetera, et cetera, Rat optimization, rationalizations, all of that stuff, right? But the important thing is, I think that the supply chain function has to manage a very, very important uh, inherent conflict that must necessarily exist in their psyche. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that I is did. the conflict between uh, uh, order fulfillment and stock out. Yeah. Right? Versus what are the right inventories to hold? Yes. Okay. And uh, it requires a, a high degree of courage to start the journey of refinement and optimization, which is where the CFO and the supply chain managers kind of have to sit shoulder to shoulder because the CFOs need to have a very, very good appreciation of what it takes to deliver into working capital agendas, okay? Yes. Which means some core basic knowledge of uh, MRP2 processes, okay, and a core understanding of some of the algorithms that the supply chain organizations invariably use to do their business, right? So you can't have uh, an old world finance person who doesn't have an appreciation of all of this sitting alongside supply chain or making unrealistic demands because there will be unrealistic demands. There'll be targets set and that's, I think, counterproductive, right? I, I think I, I think that, Raul, I mean, to, what you just said there to me is, is is actually one of the defining differences. You know, we could almost end the conversation here because I think, for me, what you articulate in terms of the role of the CFO with supply chain, which is about not just that transactional relationship of setting some targets, setting some, you know, but actually, if the supply chain professional can elevate the conversation to the CFO, to, to be on the level of the CFO, you know, and I think that's perhaps what you and I try to do, which is elevate the conversation around working capital. It's my responsibility as well as the CFO's responsibility. Absolutely. And at the same time, I got the feeling that that brought the CFO closer into the world of supply chain, that we weren't just that sort of, back office function that's made things and sent it out, that there was an appreciation that we're working together and both both understanding, you know, the needs of the business from a working capital perspective, you know, not just the, the, the sort of the, 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 the P&L and COGS impacts, but certainly the working capital, elevated the relationship to a point where it was much more effective. Mm -hmm. uh, and, I, and I think that that probably was, uh, uh, for me, you know, perhaps the, the environment of that business, that business opportunity we were in, to have that conversation made that easier, but uh, that, that's 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 I think probably the, the the crux of it for me. I agree with you because I I have submit the nine 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 partnerships out of ten between finance and supply chain uh, tend to be restricted to transactional, target setting, target based interactions, and I don't think those exploit fully the power of the collaboration, that is entirely possible. Yes. Okay? So uh, uh, so that was one. The other thing, uh, Dunk, is I've always believed that the supply chain organization and the function has a, a larger strategic role uh, 
uh, to play uh, in the context of corporates, in the relationship with the CFO, because the CFO is a driver of strategy yeah. and uh, uh, is also the initiator of uh, actions that uh, stimulate the top line. Yes. So at what stage does uh, the supply chain function become a source of competitive advantage? Yes. And I can clearly see one setting in which I have seen it being used. And I think it is very impactful. And that is uh, in a selling model that is uh, predicated on uh, alternative indirect distribution, which is, by the way, the model which is used uh, from a sales point of view in a lot of Asian countries, a lot of third yes. world countries, user distributors and you know, outsource stock points and so on and so forth. So the order fulfillment process tends to be uh, uh, predictive in nature. So you've got to be clear about who you're selling to. You know, you don't want to be selling to multiple agencies, right? Or multiple customers. Yeah. So is a, there is a predictive capability that some really high performing companies um, have developed, okay? And their order fulfillment pros uh, process and the capability based on some really, really strong technology and uh, underlying yeah. algorithms yeah. Uh, is fabulous. It sets yeah. them apart. Okay. And uh, I mean, I can see a collaboration between the finance and the, and the supply chain function there. Yeah, well, I, I think that's. Uh, we, we, I think we'll, we'll bring. We'll draw. We'll draw to a close at uh, this point, Rob, because I think that's. That second point you're making is incredibly valuable, I, you know, and I, I see it in, in, in many businesses. That relationship between the FP&A grouping and the supply chain needs to be understood, relatively clear, but completely collaborative. You know, that opportunity to understand, you know, it's not a question of, uh, you know, demand planning being owned by supply chain and passing data. Absolutely. I think actually the, the opportunity to be collaborative through that financial planning process the ownership of volume, what am I going to sell? What does that cash up mean for the business? Uh, I think is incredibly powerful. And I think uh, your, your reflections on that you know, is something I think for supply chain leaders to think about. So Rahul, uh, thank you very much for your time. I think uh, I think the average time span of a, of a, of a video on LinkedIn is about, is about 45 seconds. So we probably lost everybody about eight minutes ago, but I, I thoroughly enjoyed the conversation. Uh, I'll try and make sure this bottle of 18-year-old Glenn Grant uh, goes on. on his, <laughs> Come on, that's to me. Thank you very much. With, with, with the 300% uh, tariffs or whatever we get going into to India. But uh, uh, thanks very much for your time, Raul. Great to see you. Thanks.